Greetings, my fellow breachers, Rodamon here. Thank you for tuning in to the very first episode of a new Let's Play tutorial series covering Pacific Drive. If you would like to skip the game's overview or the intro cinematic, use YouTube chapters. Pacific Drive is a first-person driving survival game with your car as your only companion. You breach into a uh, containment zone to unlock its secrets as you navigate a hostile and dangerous reimagined Pacific Northwest and face supernatural dangers as you venture deeper into the zone. I'm streaming a mix of Let's Play and Tutorial where you live viewers will be able to vote to help influence the direction of the series. Uh, as far as the details of the series, uh, so I'll be playing with almost all of the settings on normal, except for brighter nights uh, and slightly higher brightness for you viewers so that you can actually see what the hell I'm doing when it's dark out. And then uh, consistent quirks turned on. If you don't know what that is, we'll get to that eventually. I'm not using any mods and I've already 100%ed the game already, like all achievements, completed the game, etc. Uh, but I will not be over explaining any of the game's concepts or strategies or story so that I don't spoil anything that I haven't shown on stream to preserve the sense of discovery uh, for those that are unfamiliar with the game. And uh, let's get started. So customizing the start here, as I said, uh, Brighter Nights as you can see, is turned on. That isn't normally on by default. We wanted a uh, slightly higher brightness, which I think is in video. Yep. And in gameplay, consistent quirks. And as you can see in here, there is a lot of little details that you can custom tailor to your own personal preferences. Okay, sometimes when you start a new game, you don't actually start a new game, you just continue awkwardly. So let's do that again. Because that was the game that I had already played. In 1947, the Olympic Peninsula became the staging ground for a new promising technology. As rumors of its utopian creation spread, so did stories about overnight evacuations, unsolved disappearances, and unnatural occurrences. In 1955, the government walled off a section of the peninsula to establish the Olympic Exclusion Zone. For 30 years, the zone's borders grew until the government withdrew and sealed every access point. What happened inside was never disclosed. The Olympic Peninsula, 1998. South of the Barrier Wall. So, handy is steer. I am on mouse and keyboard, so steering is a little um, jerky, as you can tell, because either I'm hitting A and D or not. Binary, all or nothing steering but I'll try to be as smooth as possible for you all. C is toggle wipers, C as in Charlie. You can also look down at the wipers and hit it uh, sort of manually. Diegetically. Let's call it. This is the barrier wall to my right.
As you can see, it's not a very well-maintained road because this has all been closed off by the government for 30 years. If you're wondering, uh, traction on the road does depend on weather. Wet roads, the conditions of your tires, the type of your tires, um, they all factor in into traction. Z, as in zebra, toggles headlights. You can also look at the toggle down here. Can you see the steering? You can, yeah. The Olympic Exclusion Zone. Get to safety. Left shift is sprint. Crouch, left control is crouch, and space is jump. F is kick. Oh, someone out there? Hello? Uh, what a swan. Uh, never mind. Francis, the radar's acting up again. You were supposed to tune up this piece of junk years ago. Put the wheel back on. So holding E picks up. X is drop. Get in the car. Start the engine. By looking down at the key and holding E, and then putting it to drive. Yes, it's back. It's back. This is Tobias Barlow and Francis Cook, located in mid zone sector B. Do you read me? I'm picking up your distress signal in the outer zone. It looks like you're somewhere around sector E. Hey, Francis, come here. Yes, it's urgent. Leave that interferometer alone for a second. Something is out there. Hello? Hello? Is this thing working? 
They, they, they don't have a transmitter. We won't hear a thing back. Huh. But if they're stranded, could they, I mean, they're from outside? They're a preacher. Hey, hey, how did you get through the barrier wall? No one's gotten into the zone in ages and looked to tell about it. And if we don't get them to safety, this one won't either. That's a good point. Hey, hey you're in serious danger. The instability's closing in, and it's gonna scramble you quicker than beef in a blender. Your closest shelter is a few miles east. Get there however you can, and be quick about it. Check your trunk for a fuel can, and siphon fuel. Siphon fuel from the broken down car. And fill your tank. So this is my car here. Oh, and I better run. Doesn't look so good out there. Whoa, whoa, wait, hold the phone. There it is again, that flip on the spectrometer. I've seen that way before, before, but where? Oh, kid, could it be? A remnant? That can't be. There hasn't been one in decades. Look at that spectral fingerprint and tell me that doesn't match the remnants exactly. No, no, no. What, what, what we should be looking at is how fast this preacher seems to be moving. Huh. You know, if I didn't know better, I'd say they're going about the speed of a... No way. No way to not tell me. They found a remnant and it's a car this time? Holy cripes! No one's had working wheels in here for ages. Boy, I'd kill to know how a combustion engine's still chugging away out there. Okay, let's not get ahead of ourselves. First, the preacher needs to get to safety. Then we can look into whether that car is a remnant or not. In my heart of hearts, I already know. They're back, baby. Drive east to find a shelter. As you can see, there's a compass on my dashboard. Poppy's Auto Shop. Get inside. Wheel fell off, but I made it here. of the entire collection of poems I've personally written that's 10 years and 17 volumes and... Oh, tell her that voice goes like a nail gun to the skull. So, <laughs> another breacher, huh? How do you outsiders not understand that Arda didn't build that 300-meter wall out there for fun? 
Unless you're one of the unfortunates who got zapped through. Wait, I just remembered. I don't give a damn why or how you got here. You're trespassing and I'd kindly like you to get the hell out of my zone. Oh, God, unfortunately, the barrier wall is as fortified against breaches trying to get in as it is against anyone or anything trying to leave. We have to find you a way out. So you might as well start by fixing up that car. Just don't break anything in my shop with those soft hands of yours. She seems nice. Pick up the backpack from the table. What? Oh, you need help? Well, there's a headset somewhere in the garage. Put it on. The built-in diagnostic will tell you what needs fixing up. Pick up the mechanic's eye headset hanging by the map. Mechanic's eye. Oppie's custom-built headset, using it to scan objects, will provide you with more information about the zone. Its mechanic's eye diagnostic tool will tell you everything you need to know about your car's status. Tenure aids at the first aid station. And pull the car in. Put the wheel back on. I lost a wheel over here, so let's go fetch it. So I'm not going to read all of the user manuals, uh, but I will try to filter out what I find is important. It's not necessary for me to explain that a summer tire is a type of tire. One could make that assumption. But having played before, I can filter out the useless things and tell you what you need to know. Which is, park on top of this battery bank. So, craft a replacement door. So, in order to do that, I open up my headset OS. I go to the logbook. I go to the doors here. And then I scroll down to doors. And then, when I click on it, I can view the blueprint. Which is scrap metal, plastic, duct tape, and glass shards. And then I can also hit C to pin it to the checklist. So that I can track the materials that I need for it. Gather items from the abandoned car behind the garage for your checklist and search the trunk. Well, the trunk is locked. So search the toolbox by the garage for a pry bar. Um, at the start, you have a backpack that can support four hotkeys, and I like to put the pry bar on three. You can also hit T to transfer materials from lootable containers to your pack and back. It will not transfer, however, items, but you can transfer those by hitting space or dragging them. As you can see. So in the trunk here were three flares and some broken glass. Or glass shards, I should say. I can also check the friendly dumpster over here. And it gave me a scrapper. The friendly dumpster is kind of a magical loot box. And often when you check it, and you can't check it all the time, it won't always have items for you. But often when you check it, it gives you things that you need. 
So, for instance, if your car is missing a door, it might give you a door. It's not necessarily going to give you a great door, but at least it will give you a freebie. Scrap the abandoned car's wheels, panels, and doors. So different car parts are made of different materials. The crude panels are mostly just cheap plastics. The steel doors are going to be metal, scrap, and steel sheets. So depending on what you are scrapping, uh, it will yield different materials. So for instance, if you need rubber, going after car tires is going to be your best bet. If you need metal, going after steel panels. If you need plastic, going after crude panels. Craft a crude door in the shop. So this is the workbench. And in this workbench, you can see all the things that we have blueprints for so far. And we're making a crude door. Install the crude door. Get the putty from the locker. So this is repair putty. If you right click things, you put it in your primary hand. So I'm holding putty, whereas if I right click the scrapper, it'll bring the scrapper up. If I right click the mechanics kit, it'll bring the mechanic kit up. And now it wants me to repair the structural damage to the car, which as you can see is here. So gray is missing. Red is heavily damaged. Uh, yellow is damaged. Uh, the sort of darker green is in good condition, and then the light green is in perfect condition. And then if there are specific issues, uh, like for instance, the trunk being missing, it is blinking. And then as you can see, both tires, left and right front tires, have other issues, denoted by the yellow diamond. So repair body can be applied to damaged pieces. But you only have so much of it. There we go. Scan the flat tire. Repair the flat by crafting and using a sealing kit, or replace the flat with the spare tire found in the locker. Let's make a sealing kit. Sealing kit is duct tape, rubber, and glass shards. And that tire is fixed. Scan the loose wheel. So any issues that you scan will be found in statuses. So we have now learned the status of a flat tire that is fixed with sealing kits, a loose wheel with mechanic kits, and essential, uh, which just means that the friendly dumpster created it for you. So if we right click the mechanics kit, we can realign our tire. There it goes. It's also worth noting that um, in using sealing kits or mechanic kits, or really any kit to do repairs, it also um, recovers the durability of the item. So this summer tire was damaged and also misaligned, and the damage and the misalignment has been addressed. This tire got mostly repaired. There's still a little bit of damage left on it, but an acceptable amount. Install cardboard boxes in the trunk. Install the craft mat in the trunk. Install the uh, arc device in the passenger there's seat. There's a little prototype of mine in the garage. The arc device. Hook it up to your car, wherever it'll fit. Uh, 
All right, I will try to stream at 30. As you can see, the volume only goes in increments of 10. So 30 might be a little too loud, 20 might be a little too soft. I'd love to be able to do 25, but... This beauty won't just be your tour guide. It's your North Star and the only way back to safety. Heck, you should consider it the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit if you plan on staying alive. That's how important this thing will be to you. Yes, that's my very own invention. I'll tell you more about it if you live long enough to use it. Get first aid kits from the locker. Store items for your drive in the car's trunk. So it wants me to put the scrapper, I'll put the tire in, first aid kits in, and road flares. Pick up the gear blueprint by the front garage door. So these are blueprints, and they will allow you to craft additional things. So that allows me to craft uh, a gear, which is useful to make tires and the like. There's also steel sheets. And this is for a tool called an impact hammer. Think of it as like a handheld small jackhammer. Use the pump to fill the fuel tank. It's also worth noting uh, refueling the spare gas can that's stored in the trunk is useful too. Align the car with the charging station in the parking bay, which is this thing, which I've already done. And throw the switch and recharge it. If you're all set, take a look at the projector against the wall. <laughs> this is the zone. Within these borders, all matter has lost the ability to hold a constant physical state. What that means is the shape, size, and makeup of just about everything constantly changes. A mile of grass can turn into 10 miles of swamp in the blink of an eye, and it does, constantly. It's caused by something we call instability. We're completely surrounded by it, and once you've watched it chew through entire mountain ranges, you'll understand that you don't want to get anywhere near it. We can only survive in here within pockets of stability. That's what you're standing in now. And that's what you're seeing mapped on the route planner. If we're going to find you a way out of the zone, you'll need to build a new antenna. Until then, you won't be able to detect stabilized routes beyond your immediate area. So, you've got to go hunting for parts, and that means taking a drive. Go on, pick a route. The Octavice in your car will then show you where you need to go. So we don't have any options here, just one route. But if we hold left mouse click, it will scan the area off you go. Make a left out of the garage and follow the access road. It is also useful to mention um, all of this information here. So there is a, a legend. So the important things to note in the top there is the K limb for gateway is how much power that your arc device in the passenger seat will require in order to get you home. Not all zones will have gateways. Uh, I would say only maybe a third do, or a quarter of them do. Uh, and then also some zones um, are dead ends. And if you ever go to a dead end, well, it's called a dead end for a reason. Um, next to that, you have junction stability, which is how stable the junction is once you're trying to get home. The more stable it is, the longer you will have to return home. And then what kind of anchors there are, which is a 
special type of energy that you will collect. Additionally, uh, the second bar is up there, which is all in the white except for resource density, is what to expect from the zone. And this is important. So atmospheric shifts are sort of localized storms. Anomaly density is going to be things that will generally cause you harm and how frequent you're going to run into that. Same with the frequency and density of radiation and zone storms. So as you can see, that's all okay. Uh, fuel density, vehicle density, and building density are lootables. Uh, fuel to refuel your cars. Um, vehicle density for loot, materials, and fuel, and building density for loot. And then resource density, which there is none. There is not a strategic resource in this area. And then at the bottom here, where my head's kind of blocking, are uh, specialty things that you will encounter here. But because we have not scanned them, we don't know what they are. There is also junction conditions. And the junction conditions for the start, first one is called perpetual stability, uh, which is not currently recognized. But once we go to this zone, it will tell us what it means. But the junction conditions are what drive the threat of the area. So there are some junction conditions which are very dangerous and some which are not dangerous at all, uh, which determines the difficulty of the zone you're going into. So analyzing the junction conditions and the root analysis of the atmospheric shifts, anomaly density, radiation uh, density, and zone storm give no idea of how dangerous the area you're headed to is. So now that we have that scanned, we're gonna hop in the car and head off. I'm gonna do one last inspection. So this headlight is damaged, but maybe not warranting a full repair. And I'm gonna put the scrapper in my inventory and take this tire off and put it in the cardboard box and then take the full health tire and install that one instead. I'm also going to take the flares and put them on hotkey 4 and put the repair putty in the trunk. And we are off. So, uh, the car's dashboard. Your vehicle's status can be tracked by watching... Oh, you know, there's actually one setting I want to change. Because I'm streaming. Um, where is it? Oh, I think it's in gameplay. Pause while in menus. Because often I'll be pulling you guys and I don't want the game running when I'm in a menu. So, your vehicle status can be tracked by watching the gauges on the dashboard, as well as lights and other devices installed around the cab. The center console displays the health and status of each car component. The radiation monitor lets you know how safe it is to get out of the car. So, this is the radiation monitor. This sort of uh, thing at the center of the screen here. And this is the health of the car. So, the condition is caution. And that's because I'm missing a panel, another panel, and a trunk door. And then have some damage to the left uh, rear, or driver side rear tire, and the headlight. And I'm also missing a front left headlight as well. Uh, in the passenger seat, there is a screen with a map where you can see your location and key points of interest. As you drive, keep an eye on your car's structural integrity, its fuel and battery levels, and various warning lights. An orange light signals a developing problem. A red light calls for immediate action. So there's the brake light, fuel light, limb, which is low battery, health, maintenance, steep for um, difficult terrain or going too high uphill. Surface, whether it's low traction, muddy, wet, etc. Temporary status effects like anomalous malfunctions, which will happen. Hazards like radiation damage and whether or not the storm is approaching. That one's real important. So, uh, to give you a quick lowdown, let me um, 
turn off the car so I'm not burning gas. Well, I probably need to show you. So, speedometer, fuel gauge. This over here, this 50, is current power level. And then the, in the red, and then the yellow is maximum power level. So, you can add extra batteries to your car to increase that. We have whether or not the lights are on. This shows that a door is open. In this case, it's missing. I'm missing my rear door. Um, the yellow is a low health warning, and then I do have the parking brake on, so as you can see, that changes if I have it on or off. Center of the screen is the radiation meter. This is the compass. This over here is special abilities, which I don't have any right now, so we'll get into that later. This is the health and status of the car, like I said. This um, sort of barometer looking thing is uh, storm intensity. This is the map. This is a read of whether the zone is like stable or storm approaching. This is a read of how much anchor energy you have, and that's shown as a gauge here. And then this is also like a wind gauge or a storm gauge for when storms are coming. Uh, up here is the radio and dome lights. Thank you for tuning in to Pacific Drive, which streamed as a marathon one time only March 16th and March 17th. If you have any feedback or questions for me, let me know in the comments below, but please keep in mind that both no feedback can be incorporated because this was streamed as a marathon one time only. And also I ask for no spoilers so people reading the comments don't have the game spoiled for them. If you would like to join my online gaming community on Discord, Rodamot.com or the description of this video have a link to it. Thank you so very much for watching. A special thank you to my Patreon patrons, Twitch subscribers, viewers that turned out for this marathon, and viewers like you as well that made it all the way to the credits. Thank you so very much. I hope to catch you next episode or an upcoming stream. Farewell, my fellow breachers, 